going on, everybody? Welcome in the Vikings Now by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman. We got a fun show today for you guys. First off, we're going to talk about what Colin Cowherd and John Middlecoff had to say about the Vikings Lions game, as a lot of love is being shown to Detroit and not a lot for our Minnesota Vikings. And then also in the second half of today's video, I do want to share with you guys a very, very interesting and concerning stat about teams who played the Lions. How do they fare the following week? And with the Vikings on a short week versus the Los Angeles Rams, this has trap game written all over it. So stay tuned for that. It is a must-see stat that you guys uh, just can't miss. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the tail half of today's video. But before we dive into that, if you guys could help us reach 39,000 subscribers. We hit 38K yesterday, and it is all credit to you guys. So seriously, thank you, thank you so much. Um, the support on the channel has been awesome, but if we could somehow hit 39K before kickoff this Thursday, uh, you guys would make me one of the happiest men in the world. So if you guys could, hit that subscribe button, lock us in as your go-to Vikings YouTube channel. So let's break it down. John Middlecoff, Colin Cowherd hopped on the uh, volume last night, and they talked about the Minnesota Vikings. This is what Cowherd had to say about Minnesota. Now, I will say this started off with a whole lot of Jared Goff love. You know, they're saying how well Goff played, and for right reason. Goff killed the Vikings yesterday. But this is what Cowherd had to say about Darnold. He said, Sam Darnold didn't play bad. He moves, but it is a perfect situation. I mean, Justin Jefferson changes everything. But Sam made a couple of deep throws today. He hit Jordan Addison on a big play. I don't know how far Minnesota goes in the playoffs because I really do feel like Detroit has became the class of the NFC. I really feel that. Now, when I went back and watched the game yesterday... I thought Darnold played his absolute tail off. Like, he kept the Vikings in that game. He made big-time throws in the second half. And at a point in the second half, he was 13 for 14. He was throwing the ball over the lot. He got Naylor involved on a bunch of key third downs, and he just looked the part. And keep in mind, he doesn't have a safety net. He doesn't have his big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Once he gets back in the fold, I'm hoping this offense would just have a little more juice with them because I did feel like yesterday the offense had a chance to go win that football game and they didn't capitalize on that opportunity. But the Lions offense, on the other hand, they 100% lived up to that you know, hype, and they lived up to that expectation. But I do disagree about Cowherd, him saying that the Vikings are, or that the Lions are in a class of their own in the NFC. Like, I understand that the Lions won that game, and they, you know, they played very well. But if you look at the first downs, they're about even. Third down conversion, they're both 4 of 10. Time of possession was literally at 30 minutes apiece, and total yards, they were very similar. Like, I thought it was a very even game. It just came down to making a couple key plays late. And, you know, just listening to Cowherd talk about um, the Vikings-Lions game, I just had a thought. Like, you know, it's not like Bates was, you know, attempting a 30, 35-yarder. Like, he was attempting a 44-yarder. I'm sure kickers probably hit that at about a, you know, 80, 85% clip this season. But, what if he just missed that kick and the Vikings won? Or what if the Vikings got that two-point uh, two conversion or got that third and four? Obviously, these are hypotheticals, but I would have been so intrigued with what the conversation would have been today if just Jake Bates just missed one single kick. Would we be talking about the Vikings as being the class of the NFC? I really doubt that. I'm sure people would still be like, man, the Lions went into Minnesota. They almost won a game without Aiden Hutchinson. Like, that would be the conversation. And I love how there has been no mention. And obviously, I'm not trying to play the injury excuse here. But there was no mention of no Blake Cashman and TJ Hawkinson. And I think those are two of the most important players on this team. I just thought it was pretty funny that there's no mention of that. And it was all Lions love. But John Middlecoff, Cowherd's podcast mate, had this to say on uh, the Vikings yesterday. He said, I think Minnesota's pretty good. Not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. They are no one and done in the playoffs. They will probably play on the road, depending on the venue. They are good, well coached. Detroit is on a slightly different level. But he said, I was impressed with Minnesota. Now, you know, I don't know if this is just me being a Vikings fan, having, you know, too much purple Kool-Aid in my system this morning. But I think the Vikings and the Lions are damn near on the same level. Like, this came down to a couple plays late. Like, like I was just saying, if Bates misses a kick, if the Vikings pick up a key third and four, if they get that two-point conversion, we could be having a whole different conversation today. But I truly do believe this game, week 18 in a couple weeks, they are going to be on the same playing field. Maybe if the Lions make a move for an edge rusher, I'll you know, not be feeling as confident 
heading into that game. But, like, the Vikings, they should have won that game yesterday. Like, they had countless amounts of opportunities to go take a football game. And the reason I was so frustrated, and I think other Vikings fans are frustrated with that loss yesterday, is that you played good enough to win. You had a chance to win. It just came down to capitalizing late. And, you know, I can run through a couple stats here. Like, I thought Darnold played good enough to go win. I mean, he was 22 of 27. I thought he was fantastic besides that one Brian Branch pick, but that's just because he didn't see them. Like, the Vikings were able to run the ball yesterday. Like, Aaron Jones, he went quiet around the second and third quarter, but in the fourth quarter, when it mattered, when you're trying to, you know, get back in the game, maintain a lead, I thought Jones ran pretty damn well. And then you just add on this, like, Justin Jefferson, he is a weapon out there. Like, he had a couple catches yesterday, even the one on the left sideline that didn't count. I'm like, there's one player in the league, there's one player on this planet that can make that play, and that is number 18. So, you know, I understand that the Vikings – maybe necessarily didn't live up to the expectation we personally had for him. But, you know, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a true best team, if not the second best team at worst, in the NFL. And you had a chance to win that football game. You made enough winning plays. You just got to clean up the penalties, clean up, you know, the mishaps that we had offensively. And I think we could be watching a lot of big-time football here in Minnesota in the later months of December and January. But Cowherd carried on to say this. He said, I think Detroit – is the best team in the NFC. Then I think there are two or three teams behind them, Green Bay and Minnesota. But Darnold made a throw to Jefferson for a touchdown. He made a throw to Addison. You have to eat some of the recklessness. Allen and Mahomes do the same, but Sam is a playmaker. Now, I thought this was interesting, what Coward said. He said, I think the highs of Minnesota may be higher, but the lows are lower than Detroit. I feel like you get the same team every week with Detroit. Now, I, this is, I'm, I'm a little shocked that he said that because I think the Vikings, I don't know if their highs are as high as Detroit. I actually probably disagree with that. I think the Vikings have a higher floor than the Lions. I don't know if they have the higher ceiling than Detroit. I just think it's because, uh, you know, Lions offense and their team, it's all stake, no sizzle. Like there's no, you know, flashiness. Like yeah, I guess they have Jamison Williams or he's a big time player, but you know, I think the Vikings are clearly good enough where they're going to be in a position that not only obviously play Detroit in Week 18, but they will meet up in the playoffs. I don't think there's another team in the NFC that can come into Minnesota and beat the Vikings. I think it's going to come down to Week 18, who is home field for the NFC, NFC Championship game, and then also it's going to determine like you know, who wins the division, who gets the number one seed. That's all going to be you know true here. But you know, this whole conversation of Cowherd and Mitikoff, it just ended with a lot of Lions love and. You know, I'm kind of happy that's a conversation where, you know, people aren't, you know, giving all types of love to the Vikings. Like, I'm happy they're giving love to the Lions to keep this team motivated, uh, motivated, keep this team locked in. But, you know, in terms of the Super Bowl, we'll see. We'll see. But I'll ask you guys this. Are the Vikings Super Bowl contenders? Give me a Y for yes um, or a N for no down below in the comment section. I'll make this a pinned comment. So if YouTube throws an ad break your way, sit back, let it play, and let me know your thoughts on the Vikings being Super Bowl contenders. Now, coming up next, I got a very, very interesting stat around the Vikings-Rams game is why this has trap game written all over it. But before we dive into that, I do want to give a massive shout-out to today's presenting sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. If you guys download the Prize Picks app and sign up today, you guys will get $50 instantly when you play just a $5 lineup. And my favorite part is, of this deal, you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. So what is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. All you do is you pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. So run your game all season long on Prize Picks. With NBA season starting tomorrow, they actually have a deal for our very own Anthony Edwards where only one point gets you a win on Prize Picks. So take advantage of that deal and sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play just $5. Prize Picks, it's the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. If you guys haven't already, please check them out. They're the number one uh, daily fantasy sports app in the game. So show them some love. I got that link for you guys in the comments and description of today's show. But Prize Picks, run your game. So why am I nervous about the Vikings taking on the Los Angeles Rams? Well, it's a thing called the Lions hangover, and I am shocked that more or that not more Mike, uh, Vikings media members have talked about this. So this was the Lions' schedule so far this season. They played the Rams, Buccaneers, Cardinals, Seahawks, 
And all four of these teams played the week after. Cowboys had their bye. So we're going to take these four teams as the example on this. What did all four of these teams do the following week? Well, they all lost, and they didn't just lose. They lost in embarrassing fashion. Like the Rams after week one went to Arizona. They lost 41-10. to The Buccaneers at home against the Denver Broncos. I think the Bucs are one of the better teams in the NFC. What happened to them? They lost 26-7. to Then the Cardinals, after they lost to the Lions at home, they went and played the Commanders. They got steamrolled. 42 to 14 against the Commanders team. Yes, they're good, but you know that shouldn't have been that big of a difference in that football game. And then the Seahawks, they play the Lions. What did they do the next week? At home versus the New York Giants. At home versus a terrible Giants team. They lost 29 to 20. This is my biggest concern heading into this Rams game. I think this is trap game written all over it, but that's not the only reason. Like the Vikings, it is going to be an uphill battle this week. Because the Rams are getting healthy. There's a chance that they get Puka and Cooper Cup back this week. Cup has already been declared to play. They also got multiple starting offensive linemen that could return this week. This is a trap game for the Vikings. It's a short week. You're heading on the road. You got to travel all the way to Los Angeles. And this is, this is something, you guys, I promise you will see it. You will see this tweeted out more and more as the year goes on. And if you guys remember, like the Los Angeles, or not the Los Angeles Rams, the San Francisco 49ers, remember they had a, uh, they had a stat over the last couple of years where it's like teams after they play the Niners, you know, they don't win those games. Same thing with the Lions, physical football teams. It's tough to bounce back after a very physical game. I mean, the Vikings right now, you're probably taking today off, going to have a walkthrough session. You're going to practice tomorrow very lightly. You're going to travel to Los Angeles, have another walkthrough on Wednesday. And then, bam, you're going against a very well-coached team in Sean McVay. Who knows this Vikings team? I mean, Kevin O'Connell, he's – I don't want to call him a poor man, Sean McVay, but he's a Sean McVay disciple. Like, McVay is a better coach than O'Connell. So I am very, very nervous about this game. Vegas, the bookmakers, have this as a three-point spread in favor of the Vikings, which, you know, I would probably agree with. But if you're a betting man out there, I would definitely, you know, hedge your happiness a little bit and maybe bet – on the Detroit, uh, on the Los Angeles Rams in this game because that Detroit Lions hangover is so for real. But you guys let me know who you got on Thursday Night Football. Give me a B for the Vikings or give me an R for the Rams. I will have a preview coming out early tomorrow morning, so keep your eyes out for that. But (sighs) concerning stuff for the Vikes heading into this game versus the Rams on Thursday. But thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. As always, let's go Vikes.